Good evening, San Francisco. Welcome to the program. Well, if you are getting your news from the mainstream media, you're probably not getting the whole story. I am actually delighted to have with me in the studio Punk Boy in SF, who is an Occupy streamer. Now, I've known you for quite a while, Punk Boy. How did you actually... Ten plus years. Ten plus <laughs> years, okay. How did you get involved with Occupy? I, what, what drove you to do this? Uh, well, before I considered myself part of the Anonymous Collective, mm -hmm. I had followed sort of their videos and stuff from technology reports and technology news, and I'd always been a sympathizer with them. And they had put out a call to Occupy Wall Street, sort of. I'd never heard of the Adbusters call to go to Wall Street. Right. Uh, but I did see the Anonymous video. And so on October 5th, the first day that I saw it on our local affiliate, uh, I think it was Channel 7 or some such, uh, they had described that some of the protesters were going to be setting up tents in front of the Federal Reserve. So I thought I would be nice and bring them down a few sacks of uh, groceries and food mm -hmm. uh, to, to keep them going down there. And about 20 minutes after I showed up, uh, riot police showed up with the Department of Public Works to basically confiscate and throw all their stuff in the trash. I knew I had no storage on my SD card on my phone and mm -hmm. that I had an, an app called Ustream that I had used once to video my dog running up the stairs in my apartment building. Okay. But from that one time, I knew that things would save up in the cloud. So I turned on that app only because I knew that I could video and save somewhere else. And within a few minutes, I had two or 300 people watching from all over the country. I had no idea people were actually streaming from uh, from, from, from occupations and such. Hold, and up, hold up your phone because this is the device. Uh, I don't think... Uh, Wanda, you, well, we also have on the line Wanda, who is uh, a, an Occupy supporter. Hello, Wanda. How are you? I'm good. You're good. Uh, you're watching this at home, right? Yep. Okay. So let me tell you, if we switch, uh, are, are you getting a blank screen? No, no. You've because, got your video nice and clear. Okay. You can see. Wonderful. So there's Punk Boy holding up his phone. So this is like a TV studio. Yeah. Any Android device or iPhone, uh, mm -hmm. you can download the Ustream app. It's pretty simple to uh, set up. You connect it to your Twitter and your Facebook Green accounts, and any time that you go live, it sends out a tweet right. and a status update with the link to your live uh, video on Ustream.tv. And how many people are you getting uh, when you're actually at Occupy uh, following this? It depends on the type of event. Uh, for a march, generally 50 to 100 people will watch at any given time, but any time the police come in and there's some sort of violence going on and the tweets start coming out that the police are attacking or, or you know, pulling some sort of shenanigans, it'll it'll go upwards of three, four, five hundred. Mm -hmm. During the big raids early on in the first few months of Occupy, like I think the most I ever had was somewhere between seventeen hundred and two thousand when I was being chased through the streets by the LAPD. Um, so yeah, yeah when, the, when when the stuff hits the fan, that's generally when the viewership rises. I, I see. So wonder, um, could you put this into some perspective? I mean, how is social media ch affecting how this revolution is being carried out? Well, I mean, the interesting thing to me about this, like live streaming started out five years ago with things like Justin TV, where people were using a phone to stream a conference, which was, you know, about as interesting as watching paint dry. And, um, and it's, it's kind of turned into a tool for people that are on the ground to be able to stream coverage from Egypt or Syria or London or Zuccotti Park or, you know, Occupy Oakland. Um, and often late at night, in the middle of the night when the, you know, TV news cameras have gone home um, and the only people that are on the street are the people who are being directly affected. So it's a really powerful technology to allow people to get a story out that otherwise might not be seen at all. Do you think that in some respects uh, what's happening is that this is produced uh, because there's so many people? Is this affecting how the police are re and the authorities are dealing with occupiers? Or, uh, or is it just simply... Uh, I mean, how does it compare with, for example, uh, revolutions in Syria and in uh, Libya? Yes, Wanda. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Wanda, how, how do you uh, think it on the world stage? How does this? Uh... Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I think we, we like to think that we have a much freer society. Um, in, in other countries, um, kind of the, the the mobile population is, is even higher than it is here. People really use. Um, Twitter and text messaging to communicate when they're really concerned about government crackdowns, but you really see the same thing here. So it's not just that Punk Boy is streaming. I mean, I actually met Punk Boy because of his streams, um, but I discovered them because of Twitter. And you 
yeah, the, the wonder of social media is that you can be interested in something. You know, you can be curious about what's going on at Occupy somewhere in the world. You know, maybe two o'clock in the morning where you are, and somewhere in the world there's something happening, and you have this ability to locate those people and discover what's actually happening and connect with them, which is extremely powerful. Um, yeah, what, what I find is actually watching the, for example, your stream, Punk Boys, and uh, other streams, is there is a connection which is not just somebody reporting what is happening. There is a very strong emotional connection. In fact, last Monday, what was happening with the uh, raid on 888 Turk Street. With the SF Commune. Yeah, that's one of the great things about Ustream and even Livestream, which I don't use because Ustream is the only company that makes uh, a mobile app that, that that's pretty popular. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's an interactive experience. I don't know. You probably can't get a Zoom. But as I'm streaming, the bottom half of my screen is actually the social stream and the chat room from, mm -hmm. from the people who are watching. So it's more of an interactive experience rather than just the like one-sided so, view that the news gives. So can you tell me how many people are watching right now? Uh, a little over a dozen right now. Uh, but there's a big march going on in New York. So Oh, I see. I see. So it's actually get, it, it affects it depending on... Yeah, and I've been tweeting out the stream from the BAVC.org site. So... But, you know, the least rated right now, we could get, you know, a couple hundred. So you just need to call us up PD and let them know you've got Punk Boy in the studio. <laughs> and that should do it, should it? Absolutely. It has before. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, so, so, Punk Boy, are, are, when you're actually there with the camera, are you frightened of getting arrested? I mean, how, does it affect you personally uh, that you're holding this device and reporting? Uh, what goes through your mind? Well, uh, my friend Spencer, who does the live stream out of Oakland a lot, yes. uh, also known as Oak Show, uh, one of the things that he said really resonated, and it's that we're sort of a proxy that's there to keep the police in check. At least that's the way we sort of saw it at the beginning of, of the movement. Mm -hmm. um, the police seem to not care if they do anything in front of cameras nowadays. Right. Uh, but we feel that having a camera there at least will lessen the blow when they, when they tended to, to go towards brutality. I see. Uh, as a matter of fact, I am... It doesn't always work. No. But. <laughs> I, I'm not sure whether we're able to cut to you on the cameras because I'm getting some blank screens here. So I've put up your uh, website, which is okay. www.punkboynsf.org. So I'm suggesting to viewers, if you are watching this on the net or if you're watching this on cable and want to see uh, what Punk Boy is actually streaming, then go to that website, and from there you'll find links to the actual Ustream account. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it also is embedded at the top of my website. And it also is embedded, so you can actually see a live picture. Yep. I see. Yeah. So, so am I afraid of the cops? Yes. Um, I think early on, like I was sort of toe to toe with them, and as long as you're on a skirmish line, they're not usually going to be really aggressive unless you do something directly towards them. And the more they see me around, I think the more they know that I'm not a physical threat to them. Mm -hmm. I'm an information threat to them because I counteract the, the, the press statements that they usually give after a raid or after a police action where they completely slant the truth in their favor. Uh, uh, for instance, just the just last week at the Occupy SF commun uh, commune, uh, they had reported that there was all sorts of white supremacist literature and graffiti all over the walls, which was completely and blatantly untrue. They didn't provide any pictures or any proof of it, unless it happened after I left, and they might have done it. I mean, who knows if they did it themselves or not. Uh, but they're very prone to slanting things in their own way. January 28th in Oakland, they said that people tried to break in and occupy the YMCA when all they were doing was trying to get out of being kettled uh, in, by the OPD. Um, What's kettling? Uh, kettling is a technique that the police use where they corner you in from all sides to either herd you up and arrest you, like the... I think it was two weeks into Occupy in New York. Uh, they had kettled all the protesters on the bridge and arrested uh, upwards of 700 people at once. Uh, just like on January 28th on Oakland Move-In Day where they did the same in front of the YMCA and rounded up 400 people just to arrest, or cite and release, not technically arrested. But I see. What was the intention of the commune at 888 Turk Street? Uh, the intention of the commune was the same as in Oakland when they tried to take the Kaiser Auditorium, was to take an empty space that had been vacant for a long time and repurpose it for the community. They were going. They, int they intended to have uh, medical clinics, sleeping spaces for homeless people, uh, just all sorts of community services. But if you'd watch the news, mm -hmm. the only thing the SFPD said was that they were trespassing and they intended to steal a building for their own uses. They didn't report on any of the positive things that wanted that people wanted to do with it. Okay. Wanda, could you explain to us how you became more involved in Occupy? Because I actually read your essay, which I posted on my Facebook blog, uh, and 
you you as you 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 self describe yourself as a uh, basically a middle class woman, and what what motivated you to become more involved in Occupy? Well, I mean, I have a long long history of um, activism and progressive causes, so. Um, I was sort of interested in Occupy Wall Street in a peripheral way. Um, I mean, interestingly, so I, like a lot of people, I saw um, the raid on Oakland, the, the, um, both, both of the major raids in Oakland, and just saw the overwhelming force that um, police and riot gear were using against people in Oakland and was outraged by it. Um, and that was enough to sort of get me on BART and over to Oakland to get involved and, and see what was going on. Um, I also got involved just with Punk Boy because I... There was a lot of concern about uh, after Oakland police had raided, the SFPD was going to raid and clear the encampment. And so there were a lot of, Punk, Punk Boy would often put out a call for somebody to go ride by SFPD and do some scouting. And so those were sort of the, the early things that I did were scouting missions just to kind of see what was going on late at night and kind of ensure the security of the camp. Were you scared by this, uh, by, by what you were doing? Um, no, I mean, again, like the... the benefits of being white and female and middle class and is, is I'm not I'm not especially a police target and um, I, I there were nights when I could go you know walk up to a police officer and say hey are you gonna raid you know and the, you know the, the officers that were always kind of perched right in front of um, one market and you know they they did make eye contact and laugh and make some jokes that I had to decide was a joke or not and um, you know, when, when one night, said, you know, are you guys going to raid? And the guy's like, I'm not in riot gear. You know, it's out of our hands. It's going to be the Navy SEALs. And the woman next to me got all panicky and decided it was going to be the Navy SEALs. And I thought he was joking, but we had to kind of make some judgment calls on the severity of things. And, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've been there when SFPD was far more brutal than that. Um, after they cleared the encampment at Justin Herman the following day, there, there was a kind of scary action that uh, people went and kind of held a GA and then were surrounded by police on dirt bikes and then there was a fairly large crowd of observers and then, you know, a few feet away the ice skating rink and this kind of whole surreal San Francisco scenario played out of, you know, as long as there were enough witnesses and people standing around, the, the, the police were going to limit what they were going to do in front of us, but um, it's certainly not what I want to see my city resources used for. Right. So, where would you see Wanda uh, Occupy heading next in the in this new year? Because spring is sprung in San Francisco, and I'm going to ask you yeah. to weigh in on that as well, Punk Boy, in a few moments. But Wanda, I want your first your your impressions first. Oh, I mean, I, you know, I certainly I, I, I there's so many different prongs to this, and whether this is one thing or many things, um, you know, today the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Um, weighed in on a moratorium on for-profit foreclosures. So I expect that we'll continue to see action around um, B of A and Wells Fargo, you know, who've received huge government subsidies and trying to slow down the rate of people being evicted from their homes. Um, there will certainly be um, action on, you know, the labor front and the economy and jobs and upcoming elections. Um, although I generally is kind of less interested in in the election picture than in direct action. Um, and I think we'll see a lot of other things that I, I don't pretend to know about that I hope will really have a positive impact on the community, so. So you're thinking uh, next thrusts are going to be in foreclosures and the jobs market. How about you? Well, those, those, those things are already happening, I guess. Already I happening. would frame it yeah. sort of in yeah. that sense. I, of, I've been pushing um, the foreclosure defense thing since around December mm -hmm. uh, as, as a very good way to outreach and let people know that Occupy is actually you know, a broad-based movement. It's not necessarily right. I mean, even though uh, there's there's the the Tea Party, like the fundamentalist sort of grassroots Tea Party movement started out very much the same way that Occupy did before Fox News and the far right co-opted them and turned it into a political party to, to their own devices. The same thing is sort of happening to Occupy at this point. There's a lot of neoliberal people who are basically trying to turn it into a reformist movement, which is not where I'd like to see it go. I mean, there's sort of this divide right now happening between uh, Occupy and it's the liberal reformists versus the actual revolutionaries where I've been in this to basically throw the baby out with the bathwater. I want the whole thing to start as a clean slate. You know, don't bring your conservative or liberal opinions into the argument, but everybody needs to sit down and have an actual talk 
based completely away from the conventional wisdom of how the country and the world have been run and start from scratch at, 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 a, at a big round table for everybody. So I hear this a lot from occupiers, which is really what you're looking for is a paradigm change. Is and not necessarily the way that violent revolutions have gone, but as JFK said, you know, if you keep peaceful revolution from happening, you force the violent revolution to happen. And it seems that the government has been getting prepared for that for the last six months since Occupy started. They've been fortifying our domestic bases. A lot of the crazy stuff that I used to hear Alex Jones go on and on and on about mm -hmm. and think he was sort of a conspiracy theorist. I think these people are nuts, right? And it doesn't I think seem Joe, nuts Joe anymore. Rogan said yeah. it best early yeah. on in Occupy. He said, well, now I take him with a grain of salt, and he's usually about right 70% of the time. And with mm -hmm. NDAA and the Enemy Expatriation Act and SOPA mm -hmm. and PIPA and CISPA and all these laws that keep being passed right under the mainstream's nose with no mainstream coverage of it whatsoever right. are very, very scary. Right. Wait, Wanda, do you want to weigh in on the NDAA and explain what that's about? And uh, these, was it CISCA and SOPA? CISPA is the new Internet the new, Security Bill. Uh, internet Security Bill. Where right. they're not even calling it a piracy act. It's right. basically Internet Security Act. Right, to protect us from ourselves. To take away the keys to the Internet. <laughs> right. And the NDAA is... National Defense Authorization Act, which gives the country's military basically full reign over domestic stuff. And it gives, uh, I presume it's soldiers, the right to arrest enemy com combatants. And well, they're called enemy combatants, combatants which is in anyone. the Patriot Act, right. but now, uh, yeah, now basically enemy combatant. the and field this of war is you. at home. Because anybody, right. anybody right. suspected of terrorism can be indefinitely detained for any suspicion without right to counsel indefinitely. And just to clarify, you know, this is NDAA 2000, um, 12, there, there's, an ND, there's been a National Defense Authorization Act every year for something like 40 or 50 years, um, but this is basically a provision that was buried in the budget reauthorization, so it's a, it's a civil liberties issue. Um, I mean, many of these issues, again, you know, Punkway was talking about kind of an anonymous, and um, th there, there are a whole series of issues that are related to privacy and, and civil liberties that are not... Um, they're not partisan issues, as a lot of Occupy issues are not, right? It doesn't, people come from all parts of the political spectrum and believe that we have the right to freedom of expression or the right to not be, you know, arrested and, and indefinitely detained. And um, there's they're certainly core issues for many people, um, including me, so. Wanda, do you find then that the people that you're talking to among your, uh, the people that you hang out with, are, are, is there a shift in sentiment uh, as more of, this, more of this news comes out? Or are people still very blasé and thinking, hey, they're just a bunch of hippies or, you know, or losers hanging out down at Justin Herman Plaza or something like that? Well, I mean, you know, we live in San Francisco, so I, I don't know that, I, 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 don't, I don't hang out with a lot of um, <laughs> you know, bank employees that look down on protesters, especially. Um, I, I think you know there, there are a lot of people who are maybe peripherally supportive of Occupy Wall Street and of kind of more mainstream reforms who are looking to see what's going to happen next and to decide how they'll participate in it. And I hope that this will continue to be a very broad-based movement with a big tent for people with a wide range of backgrounds and views, because I think that's been the power of the movement at this point. Absolutely, yeah. Now, you mentioned that we live in San Francisco, which is a very, which we'd like to think is a very special city, a little bit more liberal than the rest, <coughs> and yet we're still using riot cops to uh, attack occupiers. Is there any mean? Is there a middle ground here where the city could work with Occupy? And I'm going to throw this question out to the both of you. Uh, can you see a middle ground where, for example, Bevan Dufty can roll up with his homeless people and oh. say, uh, "Hey, we're going to ha take these homeless people under their arm." For being such a liberal and open-minded city, yes. it seems that this city does not care about the corruption that goes on right under its nose in our own city government. We have Rose Pack who basically, you know, it's unfounded and unproven, but we know it was probably her, mm. put up pop-up tents in Chinatown to basically steal the election through a fraud of absentee ballots. Right under everybody's nose, it was on the news, it was all out about election fraud, and nobody did anything about it. All they did was bring in election monitors on election day at the polls when the damage was done in the absentee ballots. There was no investigation of this. Mm -hmm. Ed Lee is now in office, he's not resigned. He's, he's, he's basically there under a fraudulent election. And it seems that this city has gotten so complacent with its well-to-do and the, the income divide in San Francisco has just right. become worse and worse. 
and the whole anti-homeless laws, the sit lie, which is now being uh, enforced against Occupy constantly. I mean, uh, if you sit lie being sit lie being the law that was passed four, six, eight no, years ago. No, it's, more it's, recently than that. More just recently, a couple maybe years, four years ago. Less than two years, yeah. Uh, which basically years. makes it illegal to sit or lie down on the sidewalk uh, between uh, 7 a.m. and 11 p.m., I right. believe. Uh, but, I mean, if you spend any time down at 101 where they're still there pretty much 24 hours a day in front of the Federal Reserve on Market Street, right. um, the whole thing with the police has come down to a discussion of technicalities on bodily positions and how you're sitting on the ground. And whether you have a backpack. Whether you have a backpack right? or a sleeping bag yeah. laying on you when you're sitting there. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's absolute, absolutely inhumane how they've been treating the people down there. And you people know, walking down the not... street don't really seem to care. Mm -hmm. When they raided General, uh, General Justin Herman Plaza, the yeah. big raid on December 7th, people were jogging by as if nothing was happening. I mean, there's lines of hundreds of riot cops beating people, throwing people stuff in the trash, and the people who lived down on the Embarcadero were just jogging by like it was a normal day in San Francisco. W Wanda, you wanted to weigh in? Oh, We've I just wanted just to say, you know, it's not like we don't have real crime in the city mm -hmm. where I really where the police need to be. You know, the, the, we've got plenty of stabbings and um, gang wars going on in the mission. We've got, you know, drug Nothing. dealing and drive bys yeah. in the Tenderloin, and yet SFPD's attention is focused on um, people who are down and out and trying to sleep downtown and, and trying it, to change things for the better. We hope. Absolutely. Okay. Wanda, thank you so much for calling in. Really appreciate your input. And Punk Boy, thank you so much for right. being here. We've so actually got just under 30 seconds 30 left. Under 30 seconds. So yes. everybody should pay attention. The mm -hmm. weekend of the 19th, 20th, I think, in May uh, is going to be a big national occupation in Chicago. Okay. And I think that protest at the NATO summit will actually set the tone for how everything ramps up okay. in the summer. And we want to thank you again. Apologize for some technical difficulties and uh, look forward to seeing you next time on the program. And look for us on the web at TPWSL hashtag. Thanks.